I don't know whether any of you have seen the film A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood. Uh, it's Tom Hanks uh, plays somebody called Mr. Fred Rogers. And Fred Rogers uh, was an ordained as a minister, but he felt that his ministry was to children. And he, he ended up having a children's TV programme. I think it was on two or three times a week. And um, he became a friend of children. Children would come and visit him. Uh, sometimes in the studio and he he would delight in spending time with them and um, one of my favorite parts in the film is when we see Fred Rogers having his early morning swim he would get up um, quite early I think four or five o'clock in the morning and he would have a quiet he'd spend quiet time he'd spend time praying and reading his bible and then he'd have a swim and this is this is the bit that's shown in the film and we hear him uh, praying through his prayer list of people people that he's met that he wants to bring to the Lord and one of the people that the name that we rec we recognize the name because it's someone that we're introduced to in the film and we see we see how God intervenes in that person's life and in that family's life and it is it is really beautiful well the topic for today is is pray for as part of thy kingdom come and so I just thought I would um, first of all, I'm going to read a verse and then tell you two things that I've found helpful when I, when I pray for others and, and then two things that I try to remember. So the verse that I wanted to read is in 1 John and it's 1 John 5 verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So sometimes I find it helpful um, if my mind is wandering a bit and I really, really want to concentrate on bringing people to the Lord. I've got a wooden cross and I just place it on a chair or on a table. And um, sometimes I'll use pebbles to represent the people that I'm praying for. Uh, other times if I have a photo of them I'll use the photo or I'll write their name on a piece of paper or I have something that I know represents them to me <laughs> and I play and I place as I pray for them I place them uh, beside the cross or at the foot of the cross or even under the cross and I, I just find this very helpful and um, I, I love just going back during the day and just seeing that there they are and that I've I've prayed for them. I know that I've brought them to Jesus, <laughs> and I know that um, He's heard He's heard my prayer, and that He's at work. Because when we when we pray when we pray for people, God does does work. Um, he hears us and He works on their behalf. The other thing that I find very helpful is praying with somebody else, whether that's a friend or or my husband David, um, just to stop and and to pray for the person or the situation. Um, it helps helps me to stay focused. And and that's why I love my prayer triplet, um, that I, that my weekly prayer triplet, because we we pray for young people in the neighborhood and uh, that we pray for a lot of other things as well um, for our families. And being together, it, it helps me to stay focused and we write down the things that we pray, I write down rather, the things that we pray for. And so I've got a record um, of over 11 years now, things that we've prayed for and, uh, and some wonderful answers to prayer <laughs> and some prayers that we're still waiting to have answered. So those are two things that, that I personally find helpful. Um, and two things that I try to remember in Mark 11, verse 24, Jesus says, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And it's to trust that when we pray, God has heard us, and that he is at work, and that he is faithful. And the, the second thing is that quite often we have to persist in prayer. We, something we have to keep going to God for that person or keep going to God for that situation and um, Jesus tells the story of the friend that went to the neighbour at midnight 
because he'd, he'd, got, he'd got a friend who'd come and they didn't have any food and he wanted, needed bread to feed him, to feed his friend. And he went to his neighbour at midnight and the neighbour said, we're all locked up for the night. Um, stop bothering me and go away. But this, this friend kept going. He kept persisting. And, and eventually it says that the neighbour opened the door and gave him the bread, not out of friendship, love and friendship, but just to keep him quiet. <laughs> and Jesus tells that story. Um, and so really he gives us permission to be persistent in prayer. And I think sometimes when I pray for something again and again, I, I just know, I more and more know how important it is to me that that prayer is answered. <laughs> whether it's for um, someone to come to know the Lord or um, someone to, to be relieved um, of illness or depression uh, or for a situation to change. But the more we pray, the more we know just how much we really want that, that situation to change. So I think God wants us to, um, to know, to believe, to trust that he hears us when we pray. And also to have the confidence to keep on asking. You might want to look at that passage in Mark, sorry, the passage in Luke. It's Luke 11, verses 5 to 8, about the persistent friend at midnight. <laughs>